Oh, hello. It's Uramir. You probably don't recognize me. You see, last time on Fate's End, I got some new clothes. Like, brand new. Made just for me. No one's ever worn them before. <laughs> Loose and stripped. Very Renaissance, like a Romeo doublet that is more form-fitted at the elbows. <clears throat> the sleeves are tied up with strips of fabric at the shoulders and like, like a, almost like a visor, a small inch uh, thick sleeve kind of comes out on top of, on top of that, almost like a fingernail. Pretty nice, right? The shirt even inflates when I pull this string. Here, watch. If you will just yank very hard on that leather strip up by your left shoulder. Right, left shoulder. Yanks it. You pull it and the strip of leather on your chest, it's like an emergency <laughs> raft. Yes! <laughs> you just... <laughs> yes. I knew Luden had something to do with it. Anyway, we waited outside of the vaults and Finn came up alone, or so we thought. Turns out, Cassius was invisible, and they walked right past the guards onto the platform. Brilliant! Finn's looking super stressed right now, but also really relieved to see um, Ermir and Ludin, and he kind of like, Ludin, Ermir, and he like tugs on the invisible hand a little bit as he like runs forward. We did it! Look! I mean- Where's everybody else? Oh, they're, they're coming. We have, well, we got him, look! We got Cassius! I mean, we can't see him. Then Priaria and Hesperis came flying out of the vaults, landing in the middle of the street. This time as the invisible, as you bring the invisibility back up, you all hear sounds begin to build from the nearby vertical tunnel that leads down into the lower vaults, uh, from the platform that Finelai just came up from. Like the horn on a phonograph, the sound just carries up the tunnel and out. And it starts low, like scuffling and yelling. You hear the crackle of magic and the flit and hum of wings. And all of a sudden, whoosh! Prayaria shoots out of the tunnel full flight. The driving force behind her flight cuts off abruptly and she just begins to arc up about 10 to 15 feet through the air and just lands three point style on the ground. 10, uh, 10 to 15 seconds pass and you see whoosh! Through the air, you see Esperice, she shoots up next and she deftly flattens her wings in, in a heartbeat as she squeezes between the platform and the tunnel wall, and then she lands just very gracefully next to Prayaria. The sounds of a horn from below summoned just about every guard from the city, and more were coming up from the platform. I had no idea what was going on, but Luden acted quickly, and he is used to bossing people around. <laughs> All right, who's doing what? What's happening? Esperies hesitates a second, but then she'll follow Luden's order and start, um, she's gonna fuck, she's gonna fly, cause she's faster when she's flying, just into that alleyway to try to, like, move as quickly as she can away from stuff, and then start stealthing once she's out of there. Okay. Uh, who's- Ferrari's also gonna go to the, to the alley. Takes off to the alley. Um, and Luden is going to call over to Ermir and to be like, take them to the mining district. Go! I, we can't leave you alone, Ludin. Uh, I have you, no reason you begin to, to be see guards right now. Go! I led everyone back to the safe house while Ludin stayed behind for Samson. Samson is the craftiest of us. I just knew he was going to come out as a bird or a horse or something. Maybe he cast invisibility on himself. I don't think any of us were prepared to see him in chains. And as it comes back up, you do immediately as... As, it, as the platform begins to make itself parallel against the ground, the first thing you see are guards completely surrounding. And Samson is very tall, and you, mm -hmm. see, you see his horns first, and he is completely surrounded by guards. He is ironed and clapped at his wrist. Um, you can't see, you can't even see his feet because he's completely surrounded by guards. He has something around his neck that has runes, um, engraved on it. And you know what that is because you were a son of Bouclier. For prisoners mm -hmm. that were taken into custody, magic users are usually put in irons that prevent them from casting spells. So he is currently in some kind of contraption that will pre that prevents him from using his magic. And uh, you um. can see that he, it looks like he's got like a black eye. There's some blood kind of coming down his lip. He's got bruises everywhere. He looks pretty rough. 
and uh, standing next to him is Gregor Rockbane. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Meanwhile, we return to the airship, finally catching a moment to breathe. Snork and Mountain were excited to see Finn and Priyari again, but as they came running down the gangplank, I remembered the Mountain got a little damaged at the fuzzy navel. Maybe Priyari would notice? You don't know what happened. I don't true. know, but they went know. to get him, and Loon's <laughs> not here yet. What happened to my baby? Snork did it. <laughs> Snork, Snork, Snork his, would never. Snork hears his <laughs> name, and he like... Thought, he, thought the, he thought the mushroom was a berry, and he tried to eat him. No, I, he's never... I, he's it was... I, I had to... Loon and I had to pull him off. It, it was a... <laughs> was really touch and go there for a second. It's you're lucky that only the mushroom got damaged. You should really be thanking me because if not, who knows what would have happened to the pool. It's a pool is a mountain here. We Please. say. She asked mountain if that's true. Okay, so she noticed. But I cast mending and all was forgiven. Good thing too. Prey tends to get a bit stabby when she's angry. We all waited a bit longer for Loon and Samson, but when Loon showed up alone, it was clear that something was wrong. Look, we can figure out what happened later. I. I, I know where Samson is what for the now. next 50 minutes. That's it. I know where he is for the next 50 minutes. Where? That direction. And he just points in wherever his mind is pinging the hunter's mark. And um, he'll be like, look, I don't know if we can get him right now, if we can get him later, but I think it's important that we know where he is. Okay, I'll admit, that hunter's mark trick was pretty clever. We tracked Samson pretty easily, but not to the prison. Takes you back up to the halls of legacy, uh, where you're able to get off. Uh, so he'll get off, and um, he'll just start slowly walking towards whatever direction he feels it in. If it you, is the gold light estate, you feel it, it. You feel it. It's coming from the gold light estate. I knew there was something about Caravus I didn't like. He had tripled his security. The entire estate was covered in guards. He was probably interrogating Samson about what happened in the vaults, if not torturing it out of him. It was clear that we needed to regroup and come up with a plan, after we found out how Samson got captured in the first place. Okay, so you were made, but how did Samson get left behind? Why did you leave him behind? We did not... Uh... It's not their fault. You think we would leave? Emotions were high, and we had no idea how to deal with Caravis. We knew Samson wouldn't talk, but what about the Wakers? What did they tell him? So yeah, somehow I ended up going with Finn to have dinner with the man who has my friend in chains. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? But we can't, we can't bring, we can't bring our own dinnerware either. Is that what you're saying? Well, I find it, that's gonna be really rude, first of all. But I mean, he kind of nods to uh, one of the other guards, and he kind of comes over. Let me say it. You see with the eyes. Oh, come on, <laughs> We haven't even made it through the gate. I know, God. <laughs> He's like, who is he over here? Jeez. So I wasn't the kindest. But they had my friend. I wasn't going to let him take my plate, too. I don't understand how Finn's always so polite. Anyways, the guards led us inside to the dining hall where Caravis was waiting for us. He had a full course meal prepared, but none of us were really in a mood to break bread. I've heard a variety of stories from everyone that I've spoken to, and the truth is apparently elusive. How convenient and inconvenient for you all, and yet as you are clearly all incapable of truth and honor. So I'm going to give you two choices. One, I will have the entire city put on lockdown until we find every last one of you. I have all of you escorted out of my estate right now. You'll be dressed in irons, far too heavy for you to carry. No water, no rest. You will walk the entire distance in these chains until you reach your destination, your resting place within the vaults of slumbering with your name carved in stone next to your tiefling friend. And there you will join him and waste away for all eternity in an ember's slumbering nightmare. He may have had a bit of a point there, but it doesn't give him grounds to keep Samson his prisoner. And what was this task? I've got a bad feeling about all of this. Thankfully, Luden and Priyari were having better luck with the Wakers. 
I know what I've heard. I have not made for certain any of the information that I've heard, but I've been told things. Again, if I were to reveal my sources, it might put them in danger. And you can understand why I might not want to put anyone in danger that is feeding me information. Interesting. Hmm. Now, hmm. this is something that I do with many sources, which I now consider you. You've helped me, and you've given me information. And the Sparrowhawks appreciate information, but we also appreciate silence. Nudin will look around, like, as if to look and see if anyone is watching. <laughs> and he will, um, is there, like, a collection plate or anything that's around? <laughs> I'll have to ask Luden if bribery is legal or not. I'm so proud of him. Unfortunately for Finn and I, we didn't have many options when it came to Caravus, and he knew it. That task he wanted us to do without question? Well, there's a reason he wanted us to agree to it beforehand. The time has come to replace the name that is Vigor from the Halls of Legacy. The mantle and the Vigor responsibilities cannot sit idle forever. There is only one solution. The Houses of Legacy must vote, you, uh, not you must vote to strip the, to strip Vigor from his titles and privileges so that another may carry out those responsibilities. Three of the six Dwarven Lords refused to vote in favor of removing and replacing his name. Alehammer, the Lord of Bounty, Burn Silver, the Lord trade and the overseer of the barter's ward and steelbone masters of antiquities and artifacts overseer of the hall of brilliance your task is to convince one of them to change their minds and tip the scale in the favor to remove vigor from the halls of legacy <laughs> 